All right, so I've just imported a bunch of models. These are models I got from CG Trader. They're not bad, but they're meant to be low poly and they're not really as low poly as I want. So we're gonna walk through how to prepare everything for importing it into Web3D. So let's go. Okay. First thing I like to do is I'm going to spread everything out it's just so I can look at them in relation to each other, make sure everything is good. So I'm going to put them in a line. And then as I'm putting them in a line, I'm going to look for any parts that are left behind because uh, they may need to get parented. So So what I can do now is see where these parts belong based on how they line up with things. And because I did just GX and moved everything along the same axis, it makes it a little, makes it pretty easy for me to take a part and then just hit GX and then move it along the axis until I find kind of where it looks like it, it was left off from. And there we go, that one. All right, well, I found one I couldn't even figure out, so I just deleted it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the limited dissolve. I'm gonna tab into it, and you can see it's got this stuff where like all the windows are individually done. I'm, I wouldn't really call that very low poly. I think the windows can be textures, but um, I mean, it's not bad. But still, I'm gonna hit A, X, and limited dissolve. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default of uh, five degrees for the angle. That works fine. And it got rid of some vertices. Now, honestly, some of those are going to come back when we import it into 3JS type stuff because um, it works in triangles. And Blender's okay working with ingons and uh, quads and all that kind of stuff. But 3JS is going to use triangles. So a lot of that stuff actually is going to come back. Uh, that's okay. I'm still going to do this process just to uh, remove anything that, that is going to be extra detail. Found some floating items out here. I'm just going to delete those. The next thing I want to do is remove unneeded geometry. So, you know, I, I think a lot of this is unneeded. Really, the whole building shape it is just fine enough. In order to demonstrate how I go about it, it, I'm going to take a view like this. I'm going to select a bunch of vertices, like, and I'm going to hit X, and I'm going to say dissolve vertices. All right, let's try a smaller one. I'm going to grab these four, say X, dissolve vertices, and that worked much better. Now the shading's off, but we can work with that. So the next thing we're going to want to do is look at the face orientation. The face orientation is going to have a big impact on your materials in, in the rendering. Uh, you probably could get away with face orientation if you set everything to double-sided, but it's still a good habit to make sure that all your outside faces are facing out. So let's take a look at how this one's going. We're going to come over here into our viewport overlays, and we're going to click on face orientation. Now everything that is red is supposed to be on the inside. And a little a little bit of that is okay. So these are probably just some edges that are that are open that you're seeing through them. But the larger area that you have in red, the worse that it's going to be for you when you go to look at it with 3JS. So if I first do to dissolve on this. Uh, so you might be able to get lucky and say mesh normals recalculate outside and you can see it actually took care of it for us on that. If that works, great. You're going to inevitably run into some where that doesn't, that doesn't work for you. So let me show you what to do in that case. 
we're going to go to this one and I'll just go ahead and select these faces and you can individually grab the faces face mesh normals flip all right so the first thing to do is definitely select all your faces mesh normals recalculate outside but then any any of the ones that are left red especially the big ones you're going to go ahead and make those uh, flip those individually next you want to look at your materials now I don't really have any materials in this one I'm going to turn off the face orientation if we go to shading here and you see a bunch of nodes your principled BSDF is going to be good that's that's mainly what you want and then the more the further away and more crazy nodes that you get further away from principled principled BSDF the less likely that it's going to work and there's a good diagram from blender on um, kind of what it looks like and what which options work for exporting a GLTF and I'll put that here but you want to make sure all your materials are good to go um, you don't want to wait till you export it and then be surprised and I do have an entire separate video on materials if you want to take a look at that or of course ask me any questions on discord all right next we're going to set some parents um, I think before we set parents actually it makes sense to set origins so for instance I've got um, these objects right here or it's actually one object just a bunch of pieces I'm gonna say set origin to geometry and it's gonna center it and then here I'm gonna say set origin to geometry and now for both of those it's like everything left behind something it was connected to over here I think that's an FBX thing okay so now that I got rid of their parent that they were all connected to in the middle we've see we've got the origins for these and I'm going to select all the children you select the parent that you want last and you say control P and hit object that's good now when I move this its pieces come with it uh, and that's exactly what you want so do that for all your objects I think this one, yep, that one has an issue too. So I'll do it one more time. Origin geometry on both objects. Origin geometry. And now I want to select child and parent. Control P. All right. And now we want to make sure that all of our names are set to something that you want to reference inside of, uh, inside of code that you can easily understand what it is. So here I'm going to press F2. And I called it something like building one I recommend doing that with the the meshes as well for when you need to reference the geometry directly but especially make sure that you get the objects you can name the materials the materials if you want that'll just make it easier to reference especially if you have one material that you're going to use for multiple objects or that you want to dynamically assign make sure you name it you don't want to have to use a, a computer generated ID for your uh, material in code once you've got all that done you're going to export your uh, export all your objects once all the origins are set oh one more thing I already showed that we set the origin to geometry I like to set the origin to the Z minus I've got a free add-on out there called quick origins and you just click a single button and it'll put that origin to the bottom I'll show you Z minus Z minus if you select a bunch of objects Z minus um, so I, I find it pretty handy and when you are placing things you're expecting zero the zero of the height to be at the bottom not in the middle so uh, I would recommend setting your origins to the bottom center of the object if you do a quick search for GLT GLTF online viewer you will find a lot of different options I've used this Don McCurdy one several times. I don't know how much he keeps it up to date, but a very helpful guy on Discord, by the way. And you select your file that you exported from Blender. And then you have a look. And from here, you can tell if you've got anything where faces are invisible or your materials get messed up or you know anything that might concern you such as this one is missing its tower uh, we didn't properly uh, 
set that up with with the parenting and all that kind of stuff. So um, that would need to be fixed. But I definitely recommend previewing your stuff on a online viewer like this very quickly before moving on from the Blender stuff. Uh, also, double check your names because you're gonna once you start having to work with a bunch of funky names that were auto-generated, you're gonna wish that you had done it and you're gonna have to start over and re redo your export. 